thank you all for being here. We're so excited to have Leslie Zemanik with us and helping us learn not only how to be an amazing artist, but to show the world this work and how to do that during COVID when the internet is so vital in keeping communications going with others. So really grateful to have you here, Leslie. I would like to ask everybody uh, to make sure that they are muted, which I think just about everybody is. Uh, there will be time for questions at the end of the talk. So I think the best strategy here is if you have questions during her talk, write them down and we'll have a good 10 minutes afterwards uh, where she can answer those. So uh, I just wanted to introduce Leslie Zemanik to all of you, although you have read her uh, short description of the event, but Leslie is a local jeweler, artist, and web designer. So has a, has a really good grasp of the art world and how to market it, which I love. She coded her first website in 1995 when the World Wide Web was only text on a gray background. So this lady has been doing this for a while and is an expert. She has created sites for the San Francisco Humane Society and Keyboard Magazine, as well as for individuals, small businesses, and nonprofit groups. And she always has recommendations for me, which I love. <laughs> so without further ado, Leslie, I'm so excited you're here. Take it away. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome, and thank you for coming. And I just want to apologize in advance if you hear really weird noises. It's probably my elderly dog. Um, who is sitting just over to the side of me. Uh, I was on a Zoom call a couple of days ago where I was listening to someone else speak, and thankfully I was muted because he just let out a big barf. So hopefully we won't have to do that tonight, but I just want to apologize in advance if he starts making funny noises. Um, so uh, you're all here because obviously you're experiencing some... Uh, change in the way you get your artwork out to the world. Uh, I know that um, so many, so many shows have been canceled. Uh, galleries, have, at least here in Portland, have been open and closed, open and closed, depending on what level of lockdown we've been in. And even if when they're open, I know a lot of people just aren't going out and aren't visiting. And some of them have started to do some virtual shows or put their shows online, but it's still not quite the same thing. So uh, we don't know how much longer this is going to go on. And honestly, from everything I'm hearing, there's a, there are a lot of people who are finding that this new way of working is actually kind of suited to them. So even when uh, all of this is said and done, and we have um, the okay to go back to living our lives somewhat like we did before, I'm thinking a lot of people are gonna be doing business in different ways. Uh, and so I am here to help you figure out what that looks like for artists. So, um, oops, sorry, just one minute. Ah, okay, there we go. Um, so this is from a, a recent article from Forbes.com. 62% of Americans are shopping online more now than they did before COVID. And I'm sure that includes people who are ordering their groceries online and everything from that to, um, you know, buying gifts. Um, I mean, I brought, just bought a rototiller online. I would have normally gone to the hardware store. So uh, it's, it's just the way of the world right now. And um, so for artists, a lot of us, even before this all happened, had been selling on Etsy. Etsy has been around a really long time as a platform for artists. But what some of you may or not, may not realize is that Etsy in 2016 went public. And before they went public, they had to get venture capital money. And when I mean they went public, I mean they sold their stock. They became a public corporation selling stock, being traded on the stock market. In order to do that, they had to change their business model uh, because they would not have been able to sell their stock without that. So they changed the definition of handmade. Some of you may be aware of this, some of you may not. 
Um, if you've been to Etsy lately, you may notice that it has been flooded by goods that I would not personally call handmade. They changed the definition to include goods that have been designed by an artist, but manufactured somewhere else. And the only caveat being that you had to reveal where it was being manufactured. You had to give the name of your manufacturing partner. But what that means is there's all kinds of stuff in every price range and lots of very, very, very cheap manufactured goods that are um, not at all what I would consider art. Uh, some of them you will see they have like 50 of them, which means they're basically the same kind of stuff you could buy, I don't know, um, at Target. And this, uh, because of Etsy's algorithms, what happens is if you have 50 of an item in stock, you, you will show that item will show up in a search long before someone who has a one-of-a-kind item. So that makes it really difficult for those of us who are truly, truly trying to make unique individual pieces that, in my opinion, is what is beautiful about art, is that something is just um, this beautiful thing that you created and you could try to recreate it and you might come up with another one that's similar. For instance, if you were doing pottery, you could do a series of them, but every one has got your, the marker of your hand in it. So no two are going to be exactly alike. Well, those things don't go get show up in Etsy's um, search engines that high anymore. So in case you've suddenly, if you've been selling on Etsy for a while and you suddenly realize your traffic has gone down, that may be part of why. Now, this is not the only reason that Etsy is not the best reason to the only, um, okay, so the point I'm making is that Etsy should not be your primary uh, web presence uh, if you're trying to sell online. The other reason that Etsy should not be your primary web presence is when you are trying to sell online, what you need to do is develop a loyal customer base, a following. And when Etsy makes a sale, you may get a shipping address for the person who bought your item, but what you're not getting is their email address, their phone number, all of those things that help you to create personal relationships with this person so you can market to them again and again. And this is the most important thing you need to realize about Etsy. Etsy owns the information for your customers. You do not own it. I know some people do create relationships and some people make sales on Etsy from people they've cultivated outside of Etsy, like on Instagram or Facebook. Um, but Etsy is still getting then a cut of that sale. And they are still keeping the information of that customer. What makes a successful business is actually getting the information from your customers so you can develop a relationship with them. And that's the thing that you can do when you have your own website. Now, the downside of having your own website is you have to do the work to drive the traffic there. But more and more on Etsy, that's the same anyway because of how much competition there is. So when you get a sale on Etsy, that person may not come back and buy from you again. They may go to somebody else halfway around the world to get something different. If someone is coming to your website and they've given you all of their contact information, you can then um, make them your, like your friend. And I'll explain to you what I mean by that as we go along. So. Um, what I'm talking about is having an email list. Now, even when I was selling at shows, I would be at shows where it might not be very crowded. It'd be kind of slow. The crowd wasn't coming in. Maybe there was like great weather outside and they didn't want to be indoors at an indoor show. Uh, or maybe it was lousy weather outside and they didn't want to be at an outdoor show. It happens. Uh, but there were always a few artists who always seemed to have crowds at their booth. Crowds. And every other artist would be standing around twiddling their thumbs, but these 
three or four artists consistently at every show we were in together would have crowds at their booth. The reason they had crowds, and I interviewed these people, I asked them lots of questions, is because they had cultivated an email list and these people who were coming specifically to see them at these shows knew they were there because they'd sent them an email a few days before and said, hey, I'm going to be at the Lake Oswego Festival of the Arts. Come see me at my booth. And honest to goodness, there would be throngs at that one booth because this artist had cultivated these relationships with their customers. So that is what I'm talking about. So they did it at their shows. Now it's time we have to do it with our websites because we can't meet face to face the way we were. So the two things you will need to do this is a website with e-commerce capabilities. And when I say e-commerce, I mean the ability to have a shopping cart online. And you need to build your email list. You can build a website with e-commerce capabilities, but until you have that email list, um, you're gonna be depending on people maybe seeing your Facebook post or your friend telling a friend about you or someone who bought your art before and they don't know where to find you now, so they Google your name and they may come. But once you start developing an email list, you will have people coming back again and again and again, and I'll tell you how to make that. So, um, e-commerce providers, we're gonna talk about that first, and I'll come back to the email list towards the end because that's a really important part, so I wanna end with that. E-commerce providers. Here is a list of e-commerce providers, um, and I think, Selena, you said you're recording this so people will be able to have this. Uh, also, I made the PDF of these slides if you wanna, um, send them out to the people who sent you emails. I'm happy to have you do that too so that people can have this list. So it's easier than ever to have an e-commerce website. It used to be so difficult. Uh, in the last few years, it's gone crazy. So these are e-commerce platforms that exist now to sell product. There are now e-commerce platforms for people to teach online. This is a new thing that's coming um, because again, of, of us not being able to meet in person, there's way, it, it's, I mean, think about Zoom. Nobody knew about Zoom until suddenly we all needed it. And they had to, they, they just jumped on it and um, bought more servers and got more power out so that we could all use their platform. And that was great. And there's all kinds of people who are developing new platforms every day because the need is there. So this is a list, uh, I'm gonna, I started with kind of the easiest. Up at the top, Wix has the reputation of being the easiest to use, the most user-friendly. Now these sites use templates. So you don't have to know how to code for a lot of these sites to be able to go and put your website up. They use templates. They use little forms, you go in on the back end, you sign up, you make your account, you go in on the back end and you um, just fill out the form and it does the work for you. It does the work for you. And Wix is, um, the, it has the easiest to use. Um, now, most of these have free, uh, many of these have free, versions and i'll talk to you about that in a minute most of them have free either 14 days or 30 days for you to try them out so if you say you sign up for wix and you got 14 days free and then you go i can't figure this out you have plenty of time to go never mind i'm not going to use you so um wix the the, the links that i've given here here are not just to their signup page, they're to the pages that show their various plans and the levels of, uh, and how much they cost. So that way you can compare, which one do I need? So most of them have a free plan. With your free plan, um, some of them, you don't get the e-commerce, you can just get a basic website. Um, on some of them, you can get an e-commerce website 
but you get their branding on it. So for instance, I got, I have a favorite clothing store in Portland and they are doing a lot of selling online. And I got an email from them today because they're having a big sale. And at the bottom of their, um, when I scrolled down on their website and at the very bottom, they use square and there was squares branding on it. So that told me that they were using the free version of Square's uh, store because it has the Square branding on it instead of their own branding. So for the most plan part, um, let me go through the list a little further and then I'll talk to you about the free versus paid plans. Square, now some of you may use a square, the little device, to take credit cards at shows. Um, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you may have gone to a bagel shop in town or um, some other you know, service place where they have, a, my groomer uses one, she's got an iPad and a square, and when I pay to have my dogs bathed, I swipe my credit card in the little square device that she has stuck in her phone or in her iPad. Square now is offering e-commerce capability. So if you already have a Square account because you've been taking Square payments, and um, this is a great option for you. Square is known for letting you list your inventory. So when I would go to shows, I would list all my inventory that I was taking with me on my Square account before I got there. So when someone wanted to buy something, I just, I didn't have to type in the price or anything. I just opened up Square, found that, and swiped their credit card, and away it went. So if you're already working with a Square account, Square is one I would recommend looking into. They do have a free version of their plan, and they have some paid ones. Square Space is different and square. They have been around a while. Uh, my groomer has her um, website on Squarespace. And again, she uses the free version and it says Squarespace all over it when I open up her pages. Her templates are pretty simple. And uh, so you do get a lot more capabilities when you start looking at the paid plans. Shopify is an option for people who have a more complex store. I know a lot of jewelers use Shopify. It, it, and so what a lot of these plans do is they integrate other things. Like Shopify integrates uh, great shipping rates for you. And um, uh, one of these, I think it was Square, integrates well with Instagram. So each of them has a little bit of a specialty of something extra that they're bringing to you as you go up in levels in their plans. Usually you don't get all that stuff with the free version. Shopify is a little more expensive, um, but it also gives you a lot more uh, options in terms of how to run your business. And like I said, I know a lot of jewelers because they have a lot of inventory and they have, um, they do a lot, uh, especially the ones I know who do a lot of custom work will often use Shopify. Um, there's another one that I didn't list here called Big Commerce and they have recently, and I mean this week, literally, I've been getting emails from PayPal who has now, I don't know if they bought Big Commerce or they just, integrated or made a, um, a deal with to work with big commerce, but they, they are pushing a PayPal big commerce kind of, um, hey, you can now set, set up a shop with us. And other than Square, which takes obviously Square payments, these other sites often allow you to take PayPal if you're already using PayPal, or a lot of them use a, a service called Stripe. He'll take payments. Uh, the ability to take payments is integrated into these uh, first four uh, template-based services. And honest to goodness, they do make it really easy 
it literally is filling out a form. And then if it's, for instance, if you're trying to set up PayPal, you just sign into your PayPal account and it does all this little magic right on the screen in front of you without you doing much. And the next thing you know, you've got the ability to take PayPal payments on your site. Uh, the technology for this stuff has come so far from where it was just a few years ago. Now, there are a couple other options if you are really looking for more customization. Um, GoDaddy has a couple of options for set. They have a template-based um, uh, shopping experience for you, and they also use WordPress. And I'll talk about WordPress in a second. So you have a couple of options with GoDaddy, and I listed GoDaddy because a lot of people buy domain names at GoDaddy. And uh, their customer service is actually really pretty darn amazing. So, and they're known for that. So if you have some challenges setting up, you can call them up and they are very, very helpful. Now, WordPress is the most commonly used platform for websites on the web these days. What WordPress is, is a basic site that uses plugins to customize it, which means you can do just about anything you want on WordPress. And I design most of my websites in WordPress because I can customize them for people any way they want. So you can buy, a, 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 you can, there's most of the plugins are free. They're um, developed by people who just think it's cool to add a functionality. So you can buy a plugin to give you um, a backend report on how many people visited. Uh, you can buy, um, get a plugin that will put your latest Instagram pictures across the bottom or the, down the side of your website. You can get a plugin that makes it run faster. You can get a plugin um, for um, collecting money for your products, and that's WooCommerce. And that's what I use on my site is WooCommerce. Also, incredibly easy. You just fill out a form. It makes the page for you. You connect with PayPal and it says, hey, guess what? Now people can pay for it. It builds a shopping cart page without you having to do it yourself. Um, so, and then you, again, you can customize these things in a million different ways. So if you have very, very specific ways you want your, um, your, um, website to behave, um, that's the way to go. Now, WordPress was originally a blogging platform. That's what it started out as uh, umpteen years ago. So most WordPress websites have a blog, but you don't have to. Uh, blogs are great ways to get people to come back and visit again because they're looking for new content. But as artists, you don't have to have one. Um, when I talk about what pages you need to have, a blog is not one of them, but if you like to write or if you are um, like to just put up your latest um, piece or talk about what you're doing in your studio, a blog is a great way to get people to come back to your website the next time if they know how often you are going to put posts up. So now I talked about all of these uh, e-commerce platforms having a free version. And I, or, or most of them, not every one of them, Shopify I don't think does, but the first three do. Um, I mentioned that on the free versions, you don't end up getting the branding on, I think on Wix free version, they don't let you don't get the e-commerce. You might have to have a paid version for that. Um, it's um, my, I'm of the opinion that if you are trying to, get people to spend good money on your artwork. And, and the more expensive your artwork is, the more I recommend that you go with a monthly paid plan because you want people to look at you as very professional. You want it to look like you've been doing this forever. <laughs> um, like if, if someone can actually put advertisements on your site if you have the free plan and they're advertising other products than yours. So I, if you can swing it, some of them are as small, as low as $12 a month. 
So we're not talking big money here. The ones that are a little more expensive are Shopify and Big Commerce, which I didn't list here. Um, because I think Big Commerce is really for a much larger uh, enterprises from what I've seen of it. But, um, you know, $12 a month, $18 a month, that's not too bad to be able to have your own branding, to not have advertising, to have a few more bells and whistles. So I highly recommend that if you can do that, uh, you go for um, the, the lower level paid account and make it look a little bit more professional, get a little bit more um, uh, bang for your buck in a way, because you know, free, it, it, they say you get what you pay for and free is free. So you don't always get too many uh, options with the free accounts. And with a lot of the paid accounts, you get much better customer service. And that's the bottom line, is getting much better customer service. So um, let's talk about what pages you need on your website. You don't need a lot. It does not have to be very complicated. In fact, it's, pretty, um, it's been pretty well established over the years that people spend about 15 seconds on a page before they decide whether they want to stay or not. So I am not telling you you need to write poems of stuff for your pages. Actually, you shouldn't. Um, you should have very little on your pages. And since we're all, I'm assuming we're, most of us here are, are visual artists of some form or another, that's probably great news to you. Um, what you want are really beautiful photos and images of your work. And I'll tell you what else you're going to need for each page. But what you really need is you need a home page, obviously, because that's the page that comes up when they first arrive. Um, you need an about page. And I'm going to talk to you why I think your about page is actually your most important page on your website. You may not have thought that was true, but I'm going to tell you why it is. You need a way for people to contact you. And you want to be able to sell people stuff, so you need a store page. So that's four pages. That is not a lot. Um, and then you can see down here, I have something called GDPR notices in small print. Um, GDPR is um, an acronym for a law that was passed in the European Union that has to do with privacy. And starting in January of 2020, California passed a law called COPA, which was also an online privacy act. So they brought it to um, the United States. And so as far as I know, no other states have followed suit yet. But the fact is, if anyone comes to your site, from the European Union or from California at this point, you must have these privacy notices somewhere on your site. Because if someone says, I, I got an email from you and I didn't want it, you can get in trouble. Um, I don't know how much trouble. Uh, as far, I don't know of anybody who's actually been prosecuted for it. But it's just a way to, it's, it's what, what do we call it? Can I say the word, Selena, cover your ass? <laughs> it, that's what it is. So I'll show you what those look like because we're going to go look at my website. I don't want you to get too fixated on those. I just wanted you to know that you need to have them. If you are buying a templated service from one of those e-commerce platforms, guaranteed they have that already coded in. Now, when you go to a website, and we're going to go look at mine right now so I can show you what some of this looks like. Um, you'll see down here on the bottom, I have this notice. We use cookies to ensure that we give you the best experience on our website. If you continue to use this site, we will assume you are happy with it. That's a kind of a funny, friendly way to say that you you know you're if you if you don't like it leave. <laughs> Every website on the planet these days. Um, so it 
doesn't make sense to say I'm going to leave unless you decide you want to get off the internet. So I'm going to click OK here. Once you click OK on a website, uh, it knows you've clicked OK. And the next time you come back, you will not see that notice again. Now, um, what that does mean is, though, they have to give you the ability to say, hey, you've got a cookie. What, they, what they've done is put a cookie in your web browser. They have to give you now a way to say, hey, I don't want your cookie in my web browser anymore. You have to get, you have to like delete all my information. That's what those two laws say is that you have to have the ability to delete the information. So when you look at my website down here at the bottom, I have two links on the bottom, privacy policy and terms and conditions. So we'll just click that real quick. It's a big long page. And I use, again, I mentioned that I use WordPress. I installed a plugin for WordPress that writes my privacy policy. Um, there are websites you can go to that will do it for like $10 or $12. They'll write your privacy policy. You fill out a form on what kind of business you have, and it writes your privacy policy. So you don't have to hire a lawyer for this. But you should have one. And down here at the bottom, what I have is the ability of how to contact me if people want me to like delete their information because they've been to my website and now they decide they don't like me or don't trust me. So that is what your privacy policy does. So um, I'm not going to spend a lot more time on that. I just want you guys to know that it's a thing. And it's just something that you should be aware of. So we're going to go back to my homepage. So you can see on my homepage, I don't have a whole lot going on, but I do have a compelling image. And I do have my menu across the top. And I have what we call a call to action. So some of you might put a tagline on your homepage. Um, a tagline is fine, but a call to action is something like, wouldn't you like to own this? That's a call to action. Or Please subscribe to my email list. Those are calls to action. So what you want to do on your website is have these calls to action. So to me, this is kind of a more passive call to action. Show the world you're one of a kind. But I'm still saying I'm asking people to do something. So this is the kind of text you want to think about for your homepage. You want to ask people to do something. And you want to do that on your website a lot because you're trying to get people to feel like you're interacting with them. So calls to action, whether it can be all kinds of things, like, like I said, it can be sign up for my email list. It can be, please visit me on Facebook, uh, or it can, or please, in, you know, come see me on Instagram if you want to know what, when I'm having a sale. I mean, there can be all kinds of things, but you're asking people to take an action. Uh, that's what salesmen do. But we're doing this in a much nicer way where we're not coming off as a slimy salesperson. Now, the other call to action that I have on my front page is download my free guide to caring for your silver jewelry. In order for people to get that, they have to give me their email address. This is how I'm building my email list. And I'm going to come back and talk about that again later on. But this is right here on my home page, and you can put this somewhere on every page. And some websites you'll go to, you'll see they have a pop-up that does it. I'm personally not a pop-up person, but some people prefer that, uh, having a pop-up. Some people ask you to go to another page to sign up for it. But download my free guide to caring for your silver jewelry is something that I will tell people I, own, I have on Instagram, on my Facebook page. Or just when I meet them, I say, hey, go to my website and you can download my guide to caring for your silver jewelry. And that way I have I get their email. Um, and then I can send them an email later and say, hey, I'm having a sale. Or hey, it's Valentine's Day. Don't you want to give your sweetie some jewelry? Uh, or whatever I have to ask them to do. So I just want to mention that we're going to come back to that. So I did mention that your about page is going to be your most important page on your website. And you may not believe me, you may think the page about your work is, is your um, most important page, but I'm going to talk to you about your about page. A lot of people put about pages up and they are less than optimal, let's put it that way. On your about page, you want to have a picture of you. 
believe it or not, people may love your work, but what they really want is they want to know who made it. I can't tell you how many websites I go to where people don't have a picture of themselves. And I'm thinking, who is this person? Now, here's the biggest reason you want people to know who you are. Before they're going to send you money through a website, they need to know who you are. They need to like you. But most important, they need to trust you. So this is what we're calling in the web world, the no like and trust factor. So this about page is where you actually establish your no like and trust factor. So it becomes very important because I don't want to send money to somebody I don't know. I want to know something about them so that I know that they're trustworthy, that they're friendly, that they're going to send me what I ask them to send me after I give them my money. And this is pretty important these days. Um, so I see people put up pictures of themselves working on their artwork, and that's fine. You can have those. But the first picture they see of you, you should be looking at the camera and smiling. <laughs> I, mean I can't tell you how many jewelers I see put their little apparatus that they wear on their faces, and they put that picture up, and they think it's cute. I can't see their face. And, if, and, you know, think about it. I mean, we're all walking around with masks on now. So we kind of have to look at each other's eyes to know if they're, we're good people, if we're trustworthy. We have to tell if we're smiling by looking at people's eyes. So the same thing is happening here on your website. People have to know if, are you trustworthy? Are you friendly? Do I want to do business with you? So this becomes pretty important here. So the other thing, and I know that some of you don't believe this, that it's really about your work, but honestly, when it comes to your work, the secret sauce in your work is you. There's a reason why some of those um, jewelers that I discussed about what, at shows always had people surrounding their booths or other artists always had a lot of people at their booths. They have some secret sauce that people want to do business with them. They're friendly. They've made people feel important. They feel like they know them. People want to be, believe it or not, people will want to be your friend. I have I had another business for years where I can't tell you how many of my customers want to be my friend. And now that there's Facebook, they all send me friend requests. <laughs> I have a lot of friends. So it's really hard to be friends with all of them. But I like to make them feel like, yes, they are somewhat part of my circle because they feel especially with as an artist they feel you have some magic that you can make this art you have some magic they want a piece of your magic when they buy your art so they want to know a little bit about you and what makes you magical this is truly your secret sauce i know a lot of people hate talking about themselves a lot. You need to get over this. <laughs> it's really, really important. So what do you say about yourself? Forget about a resume. Nobody wants to read your resume if they want to buy your art. A resume may be important if you're trying to get into a serious gallery. And so I'm not going to say it's not important. But if you want to put a resume, Either put a separate page that's a resume. It is not your about page. It's different. Or scroll down and put it at the bottom after you talk about yourself. Because honestly, if I go to an artist's about page and it's a resume, I'm like, I don't care. I'm not an art gallery. I'm not, I'm not an HR person who's going to hire this person. I don't care if they got awards. I want to know what makes them an artist. Now, most of us have also been told that in order to um, communicate what makes us an artist, we're supposed to write an artist statement. <laughs> I don't think you need a traditional artist statement either. And I know most of you hate writing them. <laughs> so I'm going to do it. Do it. <laughs> it. 
something. Okay, the way you need to write about yourself on your website is like you're talking to your best friend. Talk in plain language. And another thing I see people do is they try to sound very corporate. So and so has been doing this since such and such in time. It's like, or they call themselves we when they're a single person because it makes them sound like they're a bigger enterprise. Now, if someone calls themselves we and it's pretty obvious they're an I, what does that do to your trust factor? It's kind of like, hmm, maybe not so trustworthy. It's like, why is this person trying to like pull on me? So, Another thing that's very um, much a thing these days is, um, so I wrote here about my first brooch that I made when I was seven years old. It's a cute story. It's friendly. It makes me sound like just like anybody else. I was a kid once, right? I'm not trying to be highfalutin. Um, then down here, I have a little picture of my process. I say a little bit um, that uh, song is my meditation. It's pretty simple. And then down here, you can see pictures of my uh, studio helpers. So it's very uh, good to throw in one tiny little personal tidbit about yourself so people feel like they know you, other than the fact that you're this mystical artist that seems untouchable. This is actually uh, kind of a thing in marketing right now. On Instagram, they always say, yes, do all your Instagram posts on what you're doing. And every once in a while, throw in what you picture, what you had for dinner. Or throw, you know, pictures of your pets are the best. Have you have a pet? You know, these guys are in my studio. There they are, my studio helpers. So it's the last little thing on the bottom, and it makes me seem more human. So there's your about page. You can ask me questions about that when we get to the questions. Contact. I have one thing to say about the contact page. Um, it should usually be a form because that's a little more secure. You're not giving out your email address because, you know, the minute you put your email address on the web, you know, you get a million zillion spams. Um, so usually a form. Mine has this little thing down here, eight plus three equal, so that a human has to like add it up and a robot can't come and fill it out because there are bots that go over the web and fill out forms. But the other thing that's really important to me um, is that somewhere, whether it be on your contact page or your homepage, tell people where you're located. You don't have to give them your home address. I have a PO box online. And on my about page, I say where I live in Portland. But sometimes people want to shop local. And you go up, I've gone to websites and I'm going, but where are you? I don't know where you are. So there's no picture of the person and they don't talk about where they're located. And I'm like, I don't know if you're real. So that's another thing that people skip, they forget about it, or they, I don't know why, they just don't think they need it. But I think it's important. People want to know where you are. So it might tell them how long it's going to take to ship something. It might tell them whether they have to pay tax or not. And for some people, these things are important. So um, just somewhere, mention briefly the city you're in so people can just take that into consideration. Um, okay, so where are we? Let's talk about your shop. And then I'm going to um, talk about your free download. I realize I'm going a little long here. Um, so here is my shop. This was built in WooCommerce. I just uploaded my picture, filled out my description, put in my price. It built the page for me. Um, on Wix and Square and all of that, that'll do that for you too. Then you click on the item, and there it is. Add to cart. So I have another picture here that shows a little more. There's my description. Down at the bottom, it puts related products. Trying to make a multiple sale. No more than one thing to somebody. Oh, I love that. I love that to go with it. So um, a lot of the websites are coded to, to figure out which ones are kind of similar and do that. There's my little shopping cart up here. I'm not going to walk you through the whole thing. But 
Um, so the one question I want to tackle, which some of you might have, is do you need a portfolio and a shop? You can do that. Another option is to leave things in your shop that have sold because they're beautiful. It's okay if something is sold to leave it in your shop because it shows what kind of work you, you do that people absolutely love. This is a ring. I can't tell you I had like five people fight over it. I'm trying to get this ring. It's like out of stock. But you know what? Somebody might call me up, might message me and say, can you make one just like that for me? So there's just a little tip for you. So you can either put stuff in a portfolio in addition, but that's another page you have. And then um, personally, this is the approach that I take. Okay, let's go back to the freebie and the email quickly. Um, so how do you get people to give you your email address? The way people don't really want to give up their email addresses, they really don't. <laughs> they guard them with their lives. And in fact, I've always had uh, a little sheet at my booth in shows asking people to sign up for email. Some people would do it. Some people were like, I don't know. Um, the way to get people to give you their email address is to give them something for free. We call it a freebie. We call it your free download. Uh, some people call it a lead magnet because it's leading people to be magnetic to you. <laughs> That's a, that's a market speak term. I like the word freebie because it's free. So what can you offer somebody as an artist that they can download a digital something they can download that is related to what you do that they will want to give you your, their email address. What you should not do is give them a lesson on how to do what you do unless you're selling classes. Because what that does is it will just attract other artists who want to be like you, but not customers who want to buy your work. So if you do sketches, you can do a sketch and give people a one page coloring page. People like the color. There's a whole coloring book thing going on, right? Give them a, a couple of pages they can color that are of your work. Uh, if you make scarves or, or a weaver, uh, give them a, a sheet on how to tie scarves. If you um, have paintings, you could say um, something about framing, the best way to frame things. Uh, you could give somebody a, a card that they could download and print out that, to use as a card. Uh, it should be just something simple, one page, easy, but something that people feel like they got a little piece of you. Um, so, you know, a guide to how to take care of what, what they're buying from you is always good. Like for jewelers, that works really well. Uh, for weavers or people who do clothing, that could work really well. The coloring book thing is, can work really well. A card can work really well. Um, if you are wondering about some ideas that you're not sure if they're the right one, you know, I'm going to give you my email address at, at the end. I'm happy to like talk to people about this later if you want to bounce off some ideas. So now... In order to get this little doopatty on your website or a little pop-up to um, get people's email addresses, you need what's known as uh, an email um, provider, email solution provider. And the most famous one, the one people are probably mostly uh, familiar with is MailChimp. MailChimp has a free version. I have not found MailChimp to be that user-friendly. And the free version does not come with very good support. But it's a great place to start. But there's, a, there's another um, sheriff in town when it comes to email solution providers, and that's MailerLite. And they have a free version for up to 1,000 subscribers. Easy to use. Beautiful templates for your emails. And basically, the way I got that little thing on my uh, website is that I had a little snippet of code that they give me and just pop that in and it shows up. Uh, but that would be someone, you'd need someone to help you get that on. Some of the other uh, templated websites will have a way for you to pop that into a form to get that integrated. And then what you do when you get these, uh, this, um, this provider uh, where you have an account is you set it up so that whatever you're downloading, they, you 
upload it to them. When someone signs up, it they automatically get an email that you've written that says, hi, here's your free download. And they get a link to download it. And they also have a link at the bottom that says unsubscribe. And you will get some people who will download your free thing and unsubscribe, but you'll also get a lot of people who will say, no, I want to know about when you're going to have a sale, or I want to know um, when you're going to have a deal, or I want to know when you have something else that I might be interested in. So I, and, and what the thing that you should do, uh, and remember what you should email your list about once a month uh, as a general rule, as you start getting this list of people, just let them know I have new things in my shop you might be interested in. Or a happy Valentine's Day. Wouldn't you like to give your sweetheart this beautiful thing I'm selling? Um, and always in your email, have a call to action. Ask them to do something. Whether it's visit my website and see this. Uh, you might have a second freebie to offer. Or you might be saying, um, I'm doing a chat. I have a quiz on my Facebook page. Or, I, you know, something that... Um, and quizzes are popular freebies these days, by the way. And there are websites that allow you to do quizzes and you can put that up. Like what's your, um, you know, your, your color to wear if you have clothing or something like that. Um, so always put a call to action in your email, even if it's as simple as visit me on Instagram or visit my web, uh, my Facebook page or visit something and a link when you send that out to them. Uh, these email providers, MailChimp, MailerLite, and ConvertKit, you can go up to the website then, and they will tell you how many people opened your website and read it. And they'll also tell you how many people clicked on your links. So that'll tell you whether you're doing a good job or you need to like do something different the next time. Maybe people weren't interested in your, um, in your, in your Valentine's Day special, so you might need something else. But um, they give you all the feedback that you need so that you can keep doing it and doing it better. So the last thing I want to say about the email is if you have a domain name for your business, like for instance, if you like use your name, like www.johnwsmithart.com, get an email address that uses john at johnwsmithart.com. If you use Gmail, or Yahoo, or one of those, you're more likely to go into people's spam or junk folders. That's just the way it is. So if you are having a domain, um, most of your people who uh, host your domain will also be able to set up that email for you as well. Your branded email with the same as your domain. Okay, um, I think I powered through. <laughs> um, I, I'm hoping we can just get the questions in now. Selena, uh, take it away. Well, we ha actually had a couple of questions in the chat uh, while you were speaking. And the first one was, is okay. big commerce the same as big cartel? I don't heard a lot about big cartel lately. So I can't say. I know I had looked into them a while ago, um, but I'm happy to look that up and get back to whoever asked the question. If you want to um, send me, here's my email. If you want to send me an email and ask me that question, I will look it up and find out for you. I don't think so, but who knows? Companies get swallowed up by other companies. Okay, next question. Um, the other question that was uh, chatted, sorry, give me one second. One, Sarah was asking, does out of stock on products on your shop make people think the work is mass produced? No, <laughs> because all of them, my inventory, it all says that everything on my site is one of a kind. So if it's one and it's out, um, it's out. I mean, Etsy uses that term or they could, I mean, it, I don't, because I'm using WooCommerce, I don't have the option to, for it to say sold. 
Um, but I imagine some of them might use the wording sold, but I think out of stock is a common phrase. Uh, for instance, if I, some jewelers will make 10 of something because they cast it or they, um, you know, cut it out in the same way. Um, so they might have two or three and then you just, it will show the inventory, how many were in stock one for me, it's always one because <laughs> I only make one of each. Um, so out of stock, I mean, it might make some people think that, but I can't imagine that anybody would look at my work in particular and go, wow, somebody made that in a mold. <laughs> it's kind of organic looking. So I would say that it might depend on the person looking at it and the type of work it is. But I think when the work speaks for itself, I don't think that's an issue. Okay, anything else? If you have questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself as well. Um, I think we just had a, another message come in for you, Leslie. Oh, it's a thank you. So you can read it later. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> yeah. Um, any, anyone else have a question that they would like to ask? Yeah, this is Bob. Um, I this is Deborah. Um, my question is, you know, I've been using these and I just wanted to, as a website designer, how you found it to be user friendly or do you find that there's issues with it? I, I've had limited success with um, customizing it. Uh, tell me again what you used. You cut out just as you said the name. Oh, sorry, Squarespace? Oh, Squarespace. I don't find them to be the prettiest. Um, or the easiest, and that's I've heard that from other people who use it as well. I think um, Wix is known for the, the user friendliness and the prettier templates. I did try to do Wix first, and I don't know why, I just couldn't get it to work right. Well, you know, and a lot of it is because different ones are coded by different people, and we all have our brains work a little bit different. Some of us are a little more left brain, some of us are a little more right brain, and it's just like anything else, it needs to be the fit for you. Um, and that's why there are a number of these companies and they're all in business. <laughs> so, um, if, um, there are probably two, you know, there are tutorials on YouTube about everything. Um, I just had to do a tutorial about live streaming through YouTube. And, um, so, uh, or if you wanted to, if you had something very specific about it that you wanted to look at. You could always um, email me afterwards. But um, I think Square, the, the, as opposed to Square Space, uh, also looks like they have some really nice templates and, and ease of use. So you might look into that. Great, thanks, that's, that's very helpful. Okay. And I think Bob had the next question. Yes, hi Bob. Hi. Um, I am currently set up with uh, WordPress and WooCommerce, but I'm not crazy about the theme that I have. And I'm wondering if there are any particular WordPress themes that you would recommend for an artist's website store. Um, well, I work specifically with Divi, which is a, a pretty high um, touch uh, theme that you have to buy. And it is um, about as customizable as anything there is. But there's a really nice theme called Make that is has a free version, and it's uh, pretty user friendly and nice looking, and and customizable, very customizable in terms of a free theme. So okay. I would recommend yeah. that one. Just make, M-A-K-E? M-A-K-E is what it's okay. called. So you can look into that one. Okay, thank you. And I think they have pretty, it's, it's a particular company. They have a higher end version one. They have a, the free version and a paid version, but they do seem to have pretty good customer service. And the other one that you're using, you said was Biz, what? Divi, D-I-V-I. Um, okay. Divi is a, about the most customizable you can get. And, um, so for instance, when I started out doing websites in the 90s, 
I went to work for a traditional graphic design company where everybody was used to doing it in print. And they would stand behind my desk, the print designers, and go, can you make that text tighter? And I'd go, no. <laughs> it was what it was. But with, with Divi, you can make it tight and thin, and you can overlap things, and you can make swooshes. And I mean, it's like you can do anything you can think about. Do you uh, find that you, you need that customization? Oh, I use it. <laughs> okay. It might be a little, it, there is a bit of a learning curve for Divi. Make is probably a friendlier version for you. Okay, thank you. All right, we have another chatted question, Leslie, um, okay. from Jan, I believe. She says, I have an existing website built by a friend several years ago. I'd like to now update my web presence by using one of the options you've suggested. How would my domain name move from my old site to a new one? Okay, so um, that is a fairly easy thing to do. Um, the, the domain name, the person who built your website probably did that for you. Yes. Um, the person you, uh, the place you bought your domain name from, did you buy it from GoDaddy? Yes. Okay, so there's an easy way to do this at GoDaddy and GoDaddy can probably help you if you call them up because their customer service is good. Okay. But you go to manage domains on GoDaddy and on that page, it'll show you, it'll show you uh, something called DNS servers. So when you sign up for Wix or Squarespace or any one of these other um, services, they will tell you the name of the DNS servers that you need to put in the little form. They'll probably send you an email with it, and it'll also be in their how-to as they walk you through setting it up. Okay. And you go to Do GoDaddy, and you go to the Manage My Domain page, and you pop it in, and you hit Save. And if you can't do it yourself, you can call them up, and they'll help you with it. Okay. Um, and what it, I just want to mention, though, that it may take up to 24 hours to change over. Okay. So don't immediately go to your browser and go, hey, it's not working. Okay. So I can use the same URL? Yes. Okay. As long as most places will require you to have a, one of the paid accounts to use your domain name. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But, you know, like I said, a lot of them are like $12 or $16. Um, and I think it's worth it to have your okay. own domain. name. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. The next texted question is, could you talk more about your, uh, about telling your story? What to share that will be appealing? And I assume they mean to audiences who are encountering your website. Oh, in terms of talking about yourself on your about page. Um, well, I, you know, I mean, people love hearing like the, about like a particular experience you had making art or what did you have a teacher who influenced you or, um, you know, did you go to a museum and see a piece of artwork that made you go, Oh God, I need to do that. Or, um, did you work in corporate and you go, God, I just can't stand it anymore. Um, so those are the kinds of things. Uh, does that help? Who, did, who, did the person who asked that question around, did they want to unmute and say hello? Hello. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that's helpful. I was just, I actually work with, am working with artists about their websites and trying to think of ways to help them talk about themselves when they're not necessarily comfortable doing that. Yeah, but you know what? Everybody has that, that moment that made them go, I need to be an artist. Okay. You know, at some point when someone committed to actually put their artwork out, that's a big deal. <laughs> okay. You, you feel a little exposed, right? So sometimes it yeah. can be like, oh my God, you know, if they can tell that story, you know, just get a, um, a microphone in front of them or a recorder and just start getting them to talk. Oh, okay. Um, because people are better at talking than writing. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I often tell people, if you don't know what to write, start talking into a microphone and then transcribe. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
The next question is from Val Hubbard. And Val, you may want to chime in here. I'm not sure I completely understand, but her message says, does Mark on WordPress have e-commerce? Yeah, I'm not sure I understand that question either. Uh, so the question is, so you mentioned that Mark was an easy template for- Oh, um, make. Word, yeah, make. For, oh, it's on Wix? Ah. No, make, you said make as a theme for WordPress? Yeah, is, is, was it Mark who you said the, that was good as a WordPress template? Make, M-A-K-E. M-A-K-E, got it. Yes, you would okay. still need to use WooCommerce. Okay, okay. Um, so you could, so you can, so in addition to that, then you would also add in with, uh, WooCommerce. Okay, Woo thank you. Yes. yes, and WooCommerce is free as long as you aren't selling like, you know, a bazillion million dollars worth of stuff. Great, thank you. Are there any last questions for Leslie? Okay, well, I just wanna conclude this by saying that Leslie actually offers, offers multiple web design packages herself. So besides just being an artist, again, she is a web designer. Um, and in those web design packages, that would include email marketing integration and individualized training videos that are made for you too. So this could be a really great way if you would like a helping hand in creating your website um, to different degrees, she can tailor it for you. Uh, if you have further questions about any of her services, I have included her emails, um, her email and her website in the chat. Also, you can see it on the screen. Um, and you, you can reach out to her and she's more than happy to do a 30 minute phone consultation with you to get to know your needs. So a really great opportunity to chat through some of your specific website struggles and marketing struggles and get those nipped in the bud. So I just wanna thank everyone for being here. We did record this event and it will go into our archive on the Lakewood website. So that's www.lakewood-center.org where you found information about the event. So you can always revisit this video. And again, reach out to Leslie. Um, she's wonderful and will be a great help if you're, uh, if you're struggling. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Serena. And have a great evening, everyone. Be safe out there. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.